Hello, and welcome to episode six of the Natural Earth Farm Knitting and More podcast. Thank you so much for joining me here today. It is April 6th, and it is Saturday. Um, I'm really happy that April is here, but we woke up this morning to a little bit of snow. I don't know if you saw that on my Instagram, um, but thank you so much for um, watching. And please leave a comment below if you have any questions or um, any suggestions. That would be wonderful. So where do we start? It's been almost a month. Um, our days have still been somewhat monotonous. March, it, it gets like that in March. We've had a little bit of maple sap collection from one big maple tree in the front of our yard. And that's been fun to burn down. Um, we're still waiting for the snow to melt before we can even think about getting out in the fields, of course. And we've been getting more involved in our community, um, daily homeschooling, and of course, lots of making and baking and cooking and so on every day. Um, but we're looking forward to the change of the season when it officially gets here is really when the snow is gone. That's really when it feels like spring. We can get out and clean up everything and start getting the soil ready for planting. But we know it'll get here. So in the meantime, I'm gonna share what I've been up to. And I'm not, what I'm not gonna do is start with what I'm wearing. I came up with the name of this pattern just this morning and it's gonna be called the Equinox Eyelet, Eyelet Sweater. Because of the eyelets in it. And Equinox because I thought it was a good sweater for, I thought it would be a good sweater for the spring and the fall with a nice scoop neck line. So you might have seen on Instagram that this first sample came out a bit big for me. And that is definitely the case. Um, the arms, the width, um, also the length here, it's too much but I definitely didn't want to rip it out because I still like it. See in the back, it's too, a little too much of a scoop. And let me stand up. I like the length of it. It goes, um, let's see, just below my hips. And it has eyelets at the bottom. And I, I do like how it has quite a bit of positive ease. So it's a real comfortable sweater. But I do want to make this part for my size, which is probably a small, um, better fitting. So I started um, this past Christmas I was supposed to be knitting a family member a surprise cardigan and I knit almost the whole thing and the sizing and the quality just didn't come out to what I would call acceptable. So I have all this yarn for a sweater quantity um, that I had bought for that project so I've been tearing out the sweater and I also had a, a skein of the yarn left. It's um, tacky yarns. It's actually called Vermont, this, this uh, kind of yarn. And it is 50% uh, merino wool and 50% super fine alpaca. Um, so I cast on a different number, much smaller number. Um, 92 instead of the 100 and I've already done all the increases and now I'm just knitting straight till I get to the sh um, armhole where you bind off for the arms so I won't do it this one I think I did seven inches so this I'm gonna do six inches for the small um, and I'll slowly work up the pattern and we'll be looking for some test knitters with the deadline not until about the middle of the summer to finish it so that will give you lots of time to work on it because i hope to release this pattern by the end of the summer um, or shortly after everyone has their test knit <clears throat> excuse me test knits done and so i'll let you know that on instagram or the next video when this pattern is ready um, i think because of all of the gathering it does make it a little bit harder to figure out the sizing by the stitch count. 
At least that's what I found with this first sample. It didn't come out what I thought it was going to come out. Um, so it's fun. It's learning. And I would love to have a gray sweater like this, but a little bit smaller. So I look forward to getting to that. In the meantime, I got some beautiful yarn from the Wooly Thistle. It's a yarn and accessories online company that is right out of New Hampshire. She, it's a little small business. They recently moved to a separate um, building. So she's no longer has it all out of her house anymore because they've expanded so much. So their specialty is carrying British yarn, but she also carries other yarn. And this is Excuse me for looking over here. The Blacker Classic British Wool. It says it's a DK weight, but it's, it's DK slash light worsted. And so I figured I would, something that is a little quicker to finish than a whole sweater, I would work up a little, um, a little infant pattern that I'll do infant and toddler. Kind of like a little jumper, a little longer length short sleeve so children can wear it with a long sleeve t-shirt and leggings and this is the first size which is about the six six to twelve months oh, all of our girls have long hair so i find hair everywhere um all of our let's see so this is six to twelve months maybe more on the six month size i, I have to measure it out and check the charts um, but I love how it came out. I just blocked it. It's actually still a little bit damp. So I'll be sharing this pattern, the, just this size, on uh, my Patreon probably by Monday or Tuesday. And then I'll be adding more sizes as I get to it. But I want to get something out to my patrons. Um, so that's that. And again, it's going to be called the Equinox Eyelet Sweater. It's so fun to make little things. All right, I wanted to just com comment about recently, This I've had my, um, I think it's third and fourth um, skin cancer spots removed. They are the kind that are not dangerous, but I never really thought about wearing, I never wore sunscreen until last summer when I was, um, I had a little sample removed and it turned out to be, um, skin cancer. Uh, so now I wear um, sunscreen and try to cover up my neck area. It's all been from my neck area where they've done the removing of the spots. So just a word of advice for all of you that are especially younger and older, wear sunscreen. Um, the sunscreen that they recommend has quite a lot of zinc in it. I'll um, put a link below to the ingredients that are in the sunscreen I actually bought from the office. It was really expensive, but I compared it to a brand that you can buy like at a co-op or a natural food store for, for a bit less, and it was the same exact ingredient. So I'll share that below. It's what the dermatologist recommended for sunscreen. Um, and I really highly recommend that you wear it. It is bothersome. It's like, how come my skin, my body makes cancer cells? Well, I guess the sun's rays and but I'm gonna keep learning about it keep working on preventing it and um, see what I can do but it is it's actually nothing I'm supposed to worry about <laughs> um, all right so I showed on Instagram how I bought a skein of yarn from uh, my friend Jules the wool maiden and um, there'll be a link below and I bought this beautiful multi hand dyed yarn. She has her own sheep and she sends away her um, wool to a mill and gets it milled into some beautiful yarn and she dyes it herself. So this is a beautiful multicolored um, skein of pastel that reminded me of spring. So I knit two little doll vests. This is the little Kina vest and Mike made a little oak button See what's neat about the little oak buttons? They naturally look kind of like a flower, which is pretty neat. So 
So I already sent one off to a, whoop, one off to a friend um, that wanted one for her doll. And I also knit three of these little bunnies with the same skein of yarn. And these are in my shop, our shop, family shop. Um, but the pattern is available for free and I have a link to that. I'll have a link to that below too for you. These I originally made years and years ago um, and I have them on my old blog, Plain and Joyful Living, which I might update now and again. So if you want to know when that's updated, you can um, fill in your email and you'll get an update when I, when I do um, put a post in my blog. Excuse this. You see the cat up there? That's Willow. Willow. Anyway. So those are the bunnies. The next thing I'm working on is I took down my Belfast basic cardigan pattern on um, Ravelry. I originally did it in Knit Picks, which is a light to medium worsted weight yarn. Um, I just wasn't happy with how well it was. It wasn't written well enough, even though it's a simple pattern, I need to do better. So it's temporarily unavailable. You can't completely take it down once you put something up on Ravelry, but you can't, it's unav unavailable to buy right now. And I'm rewriting the pattern using piece fleece um, because this makes a really, I'm going to do both piece fleece, which would be a size eight needle and nice and thick fabric really to keep you warm. It can almost serve as a nice light jacket in the spring and in the autumn. And then also a version of the same pattern using size seven needles in a lighter worsted weight yarn, such as um, Nipix, um Wool of the Andes, or let me show you what I'm doing here. Um, I would also be good in cascade yarns. Oh, this, these stitches fell off the needle. Okay, cascade yarn. In this, this is alpaca lana de oro which is 50% super fine alpaca and 50% Peruvian Highland wool. Um, and it's, a, it's much thinner than piece fleece worsted. It's um, about five stitches per inch on size seven needle. Um, whereas piece fleece is about four stitches or so per inch on size eight. Um, four to five. So I get emails from updates um, from webs. It's an online yarn shop and they had Cascade yarn on its sale. It was on sale a lot and I saw this beautiful color. It's not showing up pretty well. It's actually a slightly lighter maybe in real life. <laughs> but off camera. Um, so they were on sale for $6.90 a skein, I believe, which is really excellent. This is 100 grams. And I bought four knowing that I wanted to make up some more samples for the Belfast Basic Cardigan, which is this design again, in which I made one for myself before. Um, as soon as Emily saw it, she wanted a sweater in it because it's a really pretty color. So I'm making a size seven, eight in the Belfast basic cardigan. And Emily's papa bought her, let her um, pick out an Easter dress from the Land's End catalog. And the colors happen to, it's plaid pastel dress and the color matched perfectly her dress when I bought this. I didn't even think of that. So I need to get this done for Emily in time for Easter, which is what, April 21st? So I really need to make this a priority in the next couple of weeks. And I'll show that to you next time and hopefully get that written down and published soon. Um, so originally when I made this, 
I, we lived in Maine, this pattern. We lived in Maine and we lived near Belfast, which is right on, on the bay, on the ocean bay. And it's always a little windy there. And I just thought it's always, I always would grab a sweater when we'd go, even in the summer, just in case it was, there was a cool breeze. So that's where I came up with the name Belfast Basic and I'm gonna stick with it. Belfast is a beautiful little town in Maine. If you ever go to Maine, you might wanna stop and visit. Um, I do have a free doll sized version available and that is um, at my Ravelry page. So I'll link to that too below if you wanna make one for your doll. Let's see what else I wanted to talk about today. Um, so this version of the Belfast Basic cardigan will, is about a 12, 12 to 18 month size, I think about it. And it was dyed, it was yarn from Peace Fleece, their Antarctica White, that I dyed with onion skins, and I just love this color. And these are some more buttons that Mike made for me. And they, I think they go really, really wonderfully. And I showed on Instagram, I was inspired by some other wonderful creator on Instagram. There are several of them. Um, to embroider some little bunnies, which I haven't finished yet, but I want to, um, I was originally thinking I have a front and a back and stuff it a little bit. And I'm still probably going to do that, but um, I think for this sweater, I'm going to finish making some um, facial details and some pink embroidery in the ears for the bunny. And then I, I'm going to sew it on to the front of the sweater. The felt is also wool. So the whole sweater will need to be hand washed anyway. Um, so I think that that would look really, really sweet. Really sweet. All right. So I just wanted to get this episode off um, while I had a few minutes this morning. Saturday mornings, the kids can do some screen time. And Mike does his job at recycling. So I thought I would take a few minutes. Oh, I just have to show you one more thing. This came in the mail yesterday. And I'm not one for buying things because we really can't afford to buy things. But Buckalo View on Instagram. She's a really sweet person, knitter, designer, and dyer. And she had a special offer for a, a lot of her um, naturally dyed ends at an amazing price. It, this is definitely worth so much more. Um, Emily already took two because she wants me to make her dollar carding in with it, but I haven't decided what to do. I'm thinking little baby things to put in the shop would probably be really nice to make with all these naturally dyed wools. Look at this color, it's so pretty. They're just so beautiful. There's just something about naturally dyed yarn, naturally dyed fabric, yarns, gorgeous. I'm not really, I'm not sure. If you have any ideas, let me know what you would make with them. And I'm going to draw a winner right um, after, I end fil after I finish filming this for the book, the giveaway. Hold on one sec. This beautiful book, um, Farm to Needle. I'm gonna draw a winner from all of the comments on the last episode podcast, and I will contact them um, in a little bit. All right, well, I hope you enjoy this. Please leave a comment if you have any thoughts, ideas, and I think I forgot to mention, in case this is the first time you've watched, that I live in Vermont with my family, my husband of almost 27 years, and we have seven children, five of whom are still living at home. And our youngest is seven, and our oldest son is 25. So 
we have a busy life and we're very, very, very blessed um, to have so many uh, amazing children in our lives. So I just wanted to share that too. All right, have a great week and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.